Yes, every time. <laughs> uh, well, there was a couple of people today that were really, really sweet. Came up, they were like, oh, you know, that was, uh, I always get really flustered when that happens because I'm like, um, I, I'm fascinated that, that something I did touched you that much, uh, that you liked it that much. Um, it's such an honor. Uh, but there's been a couple of people here that were really, really, really sweet and really cool, and yeah. It's, for me, it's not having to deal with it. It's, it's an honor that they care that much. Uh, just to see that, that somebody, especially somebody who would be afraid to approach, you know, a famous person and, and taking that risk and going up there and breaking down. Uh, I think that's great that people feel that they can be that vulnerable in front of us. That, that actually makes me feel good that they have a safe place to do that. But, you know, I, in being in the booth, I'm working with a lot of my heroes now. And I have that <coughs> fanboy thing that I have to suppress and and being in the room with like somebody like Frank Welker whose career I've followed forever is, is amazing and I got to work with him on Scooby-Doo years ago and I, I came into the room and it took me probably 20 minutes just to settle myself enough so that I could work I was oh my god I love him so much I had to go through all that internally but on the outside I'm going hey how you doing Frank I'm glad to meet you and he was so kind to me in that room and he, he just said well welcome to the family and if there's anything I can do to help you know we're, we're all together in this. And, and that I try to pay, pay that forward with fans and with other voice actors coming in. And it's, it's, it's really a really nice thing. So that doesn't intimidate me, it doesn't freak me out at all, because I'm, I'm one of you guys, I'm a fanboy too. He's a very Sweet nice person. Right <laughs> yeah, we try to get, I was like going to that Dana. Yeah. We'll say, we'll say stuff like, uh, you know, I like, like, it's like, it's very sweet that you're putting us on pedestals, but trust me, we poop and pee like you do. <laughs> we got bills to pay, and we go back to our lives, we get treated like rock stars on the weekend, and then when, you know, Monday arrives, we're like, oh my god, oh my god. So, it's like, yeah, it's like, we're regular people, I swear to god. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's really awesome, but I'm like right there with you guys because I'm also a fan. And you know, just before these guys showed up, I was like sitting here. I was like, oh god, I wonder who's gonna sit next to me. And then Damien and Steve sat next to me. You know, it's just it's still surreal for me. Like I'm still nervous right now talking. You know, like it's it's awesome. You know, it's I I love it. It's great. So yeah. You're a nice person. Now we can poop and pee together. <laughs> yes. All the time. Oh, I still think about you eating a sandwich in the toilet. <laughs> so great. <laughs> it's like train spotting fucking depressing. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> My question is, airports, you travel a lot. What is your horror story for traveling to a con? Uh, whether, tra uh, whether, Delays and canceled flights. Or... Wow, I don't, I don't have. This isn't a horror story. This is Chris Savage again. Uh, and this was back. <laughs> this is back in the day. Uh, this is pre before people were flying into buildings and everyone was cool and we used to drink on the tarmac before the plane took off and it was a fucking magical world and unicorns and rainbows and shit everywhere. Uh, but. Chris Savage gets the gift of the gap, and he walks up to the counter, he's like, any upgrades to first class? And he just started shooting the breeze, and she was like, okay. So he gets us into first class. We get pretty much hammered before the plane even takes off. And uh, Chris Savage's like, uh, I think I should uh, pretty much do the in-flight announcements the entire time on this plane, and she let him. <laughs> and, he'd be like, and he's a funny dude, man. Like he's quick. And he's like, ladies and gentlemen, this is not your captain speaking. If you look over to the left, you'll see it's black. And if you look to the right, you'll also see it's black because it's night. <laughs> and he just would keep going and get drunker and drunker. And by the time, can you imagine that happening today? Like, a marshal would stand up and shoot you in the face. I mean. It almost sounds completely made up and fake, but it actually happened. Best time I've ever had on a plane, hands down. Yeah, you can plot that. Yeah, do it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> My question is, um, what's your favorite character you had to voice? Or if you don't want to answer that question, what favorite character would you like to voice if you had the option to? Favorite one to just kind of do for no apparent reason is Ox King from Dragon Ball. <laughs> He's like derpy Macho Man Randy Savage. Step into his lift, Jim. 
I just love talking and being that character because it cracks Chris Abbott up whenever we direct and we're working on that stuff. Um, it, it's a lot of fun. But the one that meant the most to me was getting to be in a Disney movie, Wreck-It Ralph, for like 10 seconds. Because they had Ryu from Street Fighter. And they had Ken, and they had Sonic, and they had, you know, and they got the actual voice talent. They even put out a press release about it. And I thought, oh my god, this is like my dream come true. I grew up, you know, want, you know wanting to be a cartoon voice actor, be in a Disney movie, and I got to be a part of a really, really awesome Disney movie, because not every movie is awesome. But that one was. And even though it's a little 10 second cameo, I'm so proud and like, I'm a, my inner fanboy explodes and squeezes with glee that I got to do something, uh, to be a part of that all. And um, I hope, you know, we'll get the chance again sometime to do something like that. I can't choose a favorite because they fight in my head and my head will just be, they'll explode if I choose one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's really a tough question. They're like children. I mean, if you have like three children and you're, you're hanging them over a cliff and you have to say that's one. You always <laughs> like the cutest one. Yeah. Well, oh, problem solved. I'm calling my kids right after this. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. To apologize. And what character would you like to voice up if you had an option to? Like, from anywhere. Yeah. For me, it used to be Batman until I met Kevin Conroy. And I thought, I can't do anything better than this guy. Come on. I, you know, I, we all have our fantasies that, yes, I can do that voice. And then you stand next to the guy who's been doing it for so long, and it's like, oh man, I, I'm an amateur compared. I just can't do it. It's, that's, that's the role he was born to play. You know what's cool is Troy, uh, Troy Baker doing the Joker, and I was like, what the hell, man? You just, because that's a character that everyone would love to do, right? And it's iconic. And I don't know what happened with Mark on that and why he didn't do it, who, who knows. But um, uh, yeah, Troy just stepped in there and murdered it. It was like note for me, no, the whole, oh, it's just amazing. Uh, but that is, that's a really cool character. I would say Archer might be up there, that's pretty badass. <laughs> You're in the danger zone, Lana. <laughs> in the cell voice. You're in the danger zone, Lana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we also the last time. We're ready, we got, this might be our last question, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Do you ever dress up as your own characters for Halloween? <laughs> Do we ever dress up as our own characters for Halloween? Yeah. No, I mean, someone made me an Ox King helmet I wore a couple times at a con, but I've never, I've never really cosplayed, period. I have a she goes to be aggressive woman. I will do that. I'll do my little one of the third. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I think I'd go over well. That wouldn't scare children at all. <laughs> nope. Well, uh, at Comic Con in San Diego this year, uh, Tsunami did a live broadcast, and uh, the the vice presidents of Comic Con of, of Comic Con vice presidents of Adult Swim. Uh, Jason DeMarco and Gil Austin actually dressed up in full cosplay. Uh, Jason was the Lich King and <laughs> Gil was Gara from Naruto and they were amazing. And they said, well, would you dress up in, in a Tom outfit if we built it for you? And I said, yeah, man, I would totally do that. <laughs> and so uh, a, a day or two before I get to the con, they said, well, dude, I'm sorry we didn't have time to do the costume for you. And, and so I thought, oh man, all right, well, you know, I, I, how about if you, I just put together like a really crappy costume, can your designer just build like a really crappy helmet out of a box or something? Because I'll wear that for the podcast. And so she shows up and she's carrying a bunch of like flyers and handout things for the fans in this really terrible beaten up like fruit box that had stains all over it. And she goes, oh, here's your box. And there was nothing on it. She hadn't done anything to it. It was just a crappy fruit box that was all stained. So I said, okay, this is perfect. And I ripped out the whole front of it and I wrote Tom number six on there. And I put it on my head. And I did half of the podcast like that. So that was the closest I ever got to it. <laughs> One more. This gentleman's been waiting for a while. This is for each of you. Besides your natural voices, what is the one character base voice that Jones like to use for anything as far as anime, movies, games, whatever? A base voice that we use. Like a, like a, like a go-to neutral kind of, you're listening to it. 
I mean, Anti Jack is my voice pretty much because uh, uh, I don't even know how to say why, but uh, it just turned out that way. It's, it's a slight bit of difference, but I don't know. You, you, you have like a go to voice? A lot, of, a lot of this, like when we're doing mocap stuff and, and whatever, I, I, a lot of it's not all that goofy. Like there are rare times where you even, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's you, but you're getting hired because you're an actor, so we use our own voices like a shit ton. Generally, the director is looking for something very specific, and if your voice has like that certain quality that they want for a character, they they cast you as, as that. You don't generally have to change your your voice because they picked you because your voice sounds specifically like you know who you who you are. So they don't really ask you to change anything. I mean, for me, they haven't. You know. my, my only go-to in that regard would be just to pitch it down a little bit for some characters that they want a little bit more menacing. So like Wolverine would be very similar to Vincent. It's it's all in that same range, just pitching it down one layer at a time and then, then go down to Grunt from Mass Effect. It's it's all the same voice, but it's just pitching it down to different uh, levels. I just fanboyed a little bit on that. <laughs> yeah. I usually get called in to be what they call a utility player. Someone that comes in and you know, fills in the gaps on all of these games and shows for background voices. You know, that I do more of that than I get named characters because they say, we can get Kyle because they can sound younger or older. So, like, the younger have pitched higher, the older sound a little bit lower. The elderly, you know, maybe something in the back of your voice too that sounds nothing like anybody. You know, I love, you know, tapping into all those different things. So, then there's a little mental Rolodex. You know, when I sometimes I just get called and I haven't even auditioned, they said, just bring Kyle in, which is a great place to be in as an actor. You know, it's like, hey, free gig! I don't have to work for it? Okay. That doesn't happen all the time by any means. I audition for like 95%, and then the rest are, so it's like, bring Kyle in. We, we know. That was one of the most flattering text messages I got. It's like, want to work on Final Fantasy? It's like, yes! And then I go in, and the director is Jack Fletcher. He directed the dub of uh, Spirited Away. He says, God, I love actors, man. When they come in here and just knock it out of the park, people like you, they just come in. It's like, thank you for being so professional, so good at what you do. It's like, that I just crumbled. You know, getting an industry veteran to say something like that, so, yeah. But for a while, I was, for a while I was a big utility player, too. I did mostly that, and I still do from time to time, but, yeah. but I'll get called in and they'll, they'll just say, um, well, we hired you because you died good. <laughs> We die for a living. That's our job. Yeah, there's like maybe 20, 30 people that really get hired over and over again for dying. And so I'm brought in all the time for being electrocuted and stabbed and you know shoved into a tiny box and parts. Yeah. What have you been working on? <laughs> well, that's just for home. That's just what I do at home. <laughs> Mary, Mary that it? Mary loves that. Is that it? That's it, yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Much love, everybody. Thank you so much, you guys. Go more in the floor. Go more in the floor. Thank you. You guys have been amazing. Thank you.